Hey, welcome. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Tupper. We are, uh, what are we? Halloween day. Tuesday, October 31st. Uh, bright, sunny day. And man, it is really bright for me. I had a eye, eye exam this morning and they dilated my eyes. I haven't had that done in a long time. Holy cow, is it bright uh, when your eyes are popped wide open like that. And um, so we're, anyhow, um, uh, let's talk some Illini basketball first. Um, <clears throat> you know, they played uh, their second secret scrimmage game over the weekend at Vanderbilt. Uh, they won that game. Uh, I, You know, the, the information is so guarded on that. It's really weird how the NCAA does that. But I think they won 90 to 80 is what it sounded like. And... Um, um, you know, they shot the ball well. They shot like over 40% from three. Uh, I know Trent Frazier had a good game. Um, I think he was maybe four of six from three. Um, you know, Leron Black, Black had like 17 points, but I think he also had seven fouls. You know, they don't, they don't foul people out in these things. So, um, you know, that's something to work on, obviously. And, um, and I don't think they had, I don't think um, much uh, statistically from Mark Smith or Mark Allstork. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. And, um, <clears throat> of course, it's going to be really interesting now because Friday night they're playing um, uh, one of the, um, you know, the NCAA allows you to um, apply for a third exhibition game so long as all the proceeds beyond the expenses go to a charity. And so Illinois will play at Eastern Illinois, seven o'clock Friday night in Lance Gym, with the proceeds going to the American Red Cross. And uh, I know some people have asked, well, why wouldn't they do it at the State Farm Center? Um, well, for one, you know, you're not going to sell that out. So um, <clears throat> it's a really big deal for Eastern, uh, with of course former Illini Tommy Michael as the athletic director. And frankly, I think Brad wants to see his team play in a hostile environment. And and uh, I don't even know what Lance seats. It might be 5,000. Uh, if it's 5,000, they're right on top of you and it feels like 10,000. The, the, the one time I was there for a sellout was a high school super sectional game. And that place was nuts. Um, so, you know, it's sold out already. Um, it should be terrific environment. And, um, and Eastern's got, I think they maybe have like four starters back um so you know it, it just can be fun to see them play see them play uh the brad underwood style and see how they're adjusting and adapting because one week later exactly is the season opener against southern on november the 10th so that's going to be cool to see friday night I'm very much looking forward to that um of course we had the um Taylor horton tucker fiasco whatever you want to call it it was just a very awkward conclusion to a recruitment and um, you know someday we'll hear all of the oh, maybe we will maybe we'll hear all of the inner workings of exactly what was said to whom by whom when and so forth but uh, for the time being um, he will be going to Iowa State and uh, I just think he's a really good player and I think Illinois would have uh, you know really benefited by having him in the program and and uh, it's just too bad that it turned out the way it did. So uh, they move on, and we'll see where they go uh, in terms of, I, I think with this staff, it's really hard to predict who they will identify it because, you know, there's a couple names out there, including um, Tim Finke. But um, don't be surprised if these guys pull a rabbit out of their hat. I mean, you know, it could be an international somebody. It could be, I, I mean, they just, you know, they're hard to predict. They, they, were, they cast a wide net. Um, so um, <clears throat> that stuff's going on. And then um, as for um, football, um, <laughs> how do you predict what this team's going to do? You know, they, they play Rutgers and they play Minnesota, uh, two not very good teams, and look like they can't tackle anyone. Then they play Wisconsin, a really good running team. And... Um, and they come out and flying around, uh, Stanley Green setting a tone, Bennett Williams um, just making a lot of hits and a lot of tackles. And um, it really was interesting for me to watch them defensively. They played light years better than they had the two previous weeks. And, and um, 
But, you know, the thing now that I think is really befuddling everybody is this quarterback rotation. I don't think anybody understands how it's working, uh, when they determine one guy is better to be on the field than another. I think it was kind of a head scratcher when Jeff George Jr. led them down the field, got them to about the 20, and seemed to have some rhythm and, and was doing well. Jeff has not thrown an interception in the last two weeks. And um, and then he came out and Cam uh, Thomas came in. And I think we've seen enough of Cam to understand that he's a really good runner, really good athlete, uh, strong arm, but he doesn't yet see defensive people between the football and the path to a receiver. And, uh, and thus some kind of painful interceptions, costly interceptions. Um, so anyhow, um, it was it was an interesting game. I was really disappointed in Wisconsin. I think they're ranked fourth now this week. If I, that does not look like a, f a top four football team to me. Tonight the um, the playoff rankings will be revealed. I'll be curious to see where Wisconsin is because if you look at their schedule, they've got a chance to run the table. And, uh, I, I mean, I realize that their running back uh, didn't play in the second half. Sure, that mattered. But still, um, I don't – you know, if you watch Alabama, if you watch Georgia, um, those, those teams are on a different level completely. I don't really know what to make of Ohio State now. That comeback against Penn State was remarkable. Um, and – and I'll be curious to see what the committee feels about the Buckeyes um, and um, and Penn State, for that matter, you know. And um, so it's all that's kind of interesting. The rankings will are just a starting point. They will change. I'll be curious to see if we can get a feel for how the committee views the Big Ten by how they um, slot these teams, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Penn State. Um, and then... Um, and some of the other teams, too, in the country, um, you know, Clemson had that bad loss to Syracuse, and then um, um, Oklahoma, you know, uh, which whooped up on Ohio State, but uh, but lost uh, as well. So um, all that's going to be kind of interesting to see this evening. And then, um, and then Illinois gets ready to play uh, Purdue on Saturday. Purdue, very different team. I mean, Illinois has faced some run-heavy teams here the last three weeks. And uh, Purdue does uh, a lot more throwing. And um, with Jeff Brom, you know, he loves trick plays. He'll do, um, you know, he'll do about anything. I mean, he, he will throw some things at you and try to, particularly against a young secondary like Illinois has, and try to sucker them out of position. Uh, Wisconsin did it the other day with that throwback pass to a lineman. But uh, Purdue does it a, a lot more. I mean, they will... They'll bring some things, uh, and yet they've lost three games in a row. They've been in a lot of close games, and um, so we'll see how that goes. That's 11 o'clock Saturday. Um, you know, I couldn't get a feel talking to Levy yesterday about this quarterback rotation um, because he made a big deal about the turnovers have to stop on offense. Well, but but we've been led to believe, and, and the way they've used their personnel, we've been led to believe that the development of Cam Thomas – is just as important as winning a game and so sometimes those things are in conflict with one another and it appears to me that they are uh, at times right now it appears to me if you just wanted to win the game you would probably better off to just go with Jeff George uh, but I understand that this is about development too I mean for goodness gracious there how many freshmen have they got I mean even more now and um, so we'll see uh, we'll also see if they get some people back it would help for the help them to get Rayvon Bonner back. He's in concussion protocol. Um, it doesn't sound like Mikey Dudek is going to be back. I don't know what his injury is. Talking to people yesterday, there was quite a few people that felt like it might be a back injury. Um, I thought it was a good sign that when Mikey Dudek went down, he, he was on his knees for a long time because I don't think you're on your knees if you have a knee injury. And that's, of course, the bigger worry with, with Mikey is... Um, you know, he, you don't want a recurrence of uh, of the knee problems that he's had. So, um, so we'll see when they get him back, and if they get anyone else back. It helped this last week, though, to get Delshawn Phillips back at linebacker, and it helped to get uh, uh, 
Daly Harding back at linebacker as well. Delshawn Phillips uh, was really pretty good and made a lot of tackles. He, when he's healthy and he's in there, he makes a lot of tackles. And I thought Jamal Milan had a really good game in the middle of that defensive line. He was disruptive. Uh, he certainly helped Illinois put up a different kind of resistance than what we saw or didn't see the last two weeks against Rutgers and, and Minnesota prior to the Wisconsin game. So um, anyhow, uh, we will see what happens. I'm going to go to Eastern Friday night, do the basketball game, head over to Lafayette uh, Friday night, do the football game on Saturday. Um, and then, you know, we're getting to where f basketball and football are really going to overlap here through the rest of November. I was looking at the schedule. I mean, it's just, you know, there's football, there's basketball, back and forth, a lot of games coming up, uh, Friday, Sunday games coming up um, at home. And um, I hope people will have a chance to get over. One final thing. Um, yesterday, Josh Whitman announced that <clears throat> The um, athletic department is going to be raising $300 million between now and 2022 as part of this two and a quarter billion dollar university fundraising initiative. And, um, you know, that includes 200 million for capital projects. And the centerpiece of that is that $79.2 million football performance center, which really looks cool. And, um, and then he'll have announcements soon about other things. I think there's going to be an effort to do an upgrade at Ubbin. Um, um, that, that's not a bad practice facility at all, but they want more and they want it self-contained. I think you're going to see nutrition. Uh, I think you're going to see a kitchen there so that when they have those players in on Saturday morning, they can feed them. And uh, I think you'll see a little bit there. I think baseball is certainly in for an upgrade. Um, that's been talked about for a while. Um, and, and we'll see what else is uh, on the uh, docket there. But the most interesting conversation I had yesterday was um, regarding hockey. You know, Illinois has um, is using a consultant to look into the feasibility of adding men's intercollegiate hockey. Um, they got some money from the NHL to do that. The NHL would like to see Illinois add hockey. The Chicago Blackhawks would like to see Illinois add hockey. Uh, they think it can be extremely successful. There's a ton of good high school hockey talent in the Chicago area that does not have an opportunity to stay in state in state because there's not a Division I uh, college hockey program in Illinois. So they go to Wisconsin, Michigan, um, they go to Notre Dame, they go to Minnesota, they go to Boston College, wherever. And, um, <clears throat> and if there was an in-state option, um, they would perhaps choose it. They're looking at a three rink facility. One rink would be a community ice rink, one rink would be a practice rink for the team, and one rink would be the competition rink with a 5,000 seat uh, arena, stadium, whatever you want to call it. And um, <clears throat> I'm told that they have already had some amazing people contact them wanting to be the first Illinois hockey coach. I take that to mean uh, ex-NHL ex people, maybe former Blackhawk people. Uh, I mentioned Chris, uh, Chris Chelios to somebody, um, and, and I don't know that he is one, but I'm, I'm, that's the kind of a name that I think they could attract to this thing, to build this program from the ground up. At the same time, because of Title IX, you have to look at um, uh, that would be 18 scholarships, by the way, for hockey. So you have to add 18 women's uh, scholarships. How would they do that? They would not do it with women's hockey, okay? There's very few schools that do women's hockey. Um, but would it be lacrosse? Would it be? I don't know. And I don't think they know either. I think that's part of the uh, study that this consultant is, is doing for them right now. But they have two locations picked out for where this would be. And um, I think in their conversations with the Blackhawks and the NHL, uh, Josh really had his eyes open to how cool this could be. So I think it would be cool too. I think they would sell out that arena. I, I think people would really go for it. And um, we'll see. You know, Josh said yesterday his exact words, let's see if we can bring hockey across the finish line. And uh, I'm hoping they can do it. Obviously, money's a big issue. Somebody's got to step up and 
and see this as something they want in on the ground floor of and they want to help make happen. And it seems to me in the Chicago area, um, there's some people who might do that. There's a, just there's a lot of kids up there playing hockey and uh, and parents who like the sport and um, and would probably like to see that. It would be really, really cool. So we'll keep watching that. Anyhow, thanks for riding along today. Appreciate it a lot. Um, here, I'll turn my camera and show you my dog. She, she's running up here. Running along. <laughs> She thought she saw things in the woods, and now she's just charging along. She has so much fun. Anyhow, thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. See you later.